again, people of all saints. We are this week sharing uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Uh, his day falls on Friday uh, within our lectionary, but uh, it is Wednesday today as I record. Um, but we thought we would share this week something of this uh, man. He was born in the Basque region of northern Spain in 1491 and he spent much of his young adult life preparing to be a soldier. He was, so we read in uh, this rather lovely book, The Jesuit Guide to Almost Everything by James Martin. Fully recommend this book to anyone that would like to, uh, to find out more about the Jesuit tradition. Uh, but we find out in reading that book that this young man, Ignatius, was a ladies' man, a bit of a hothead, he had a great and foolish desire to win fame. He desired worldly success. And we are told that he's probably one of the few saints to have had a police record for nighttime brawling with intent to cause serious harm. During a battle in Pamplona, a place that I've walked through, a beautiful place, when I was walking to Santiago Compostela in 2013, uh, he, this man, had a very different experience, Ignatius of Pamplona. In 1521, he was in battle and a cannonball hit him and struck his leg. It caused serious damage, obviously, and it meant a whole series of operations. Those operations went on because he wanted to get back to full health and wanted to look good so that he could wear the very latest fashion of tights, so I read. He had, in his convalescing, uh, his brother's wife to support him, and she brought him a book on the saints. This probably wasn't his number one choice to read during his time of getting better, and it was probably indeed the last thing he wanted. But maybe, just maybe, when he started to read about the saints, God worked within him. Now, there's an interesting thought about Saint Ignatius at this point, that he clearly had a big ego, an ego that said he could be someone who could achieve a lot and could attract beautiful ladies. But that ego may have been worked on by God when he discovered the saints, because what it said happened is Saint Ignatius thought when he read the life of St. Francis of Assisi, um, or indeed St. Dominic, uh, he thought, well, I can do what they've done. His ego worked in a different way. Uh, it's put that God used his pride for good. At 31 years of age, he entered um, a place for uh, worship. He went on a pilgrimage to the Abbey in Montserrat, the Benedictine Abbey in Montserrat. I've been there many, many years ago when I was a young man, um, seeking some of the fun-loving life that uh, St. Ignatius saw in my early 20s. He gave his garments to a beggar on that trip and he laid his sword at the statue of Mary, so it is said. His life in those days changed though and it became so austere, so hard on himself, that it led him to a position of despair almost. He almost wanted to give up on life uh, with this uh, very austere form of living. It said that he found some sense of elite equilibrium within his life and he found a desire to write the spiritual exercises, that journey being close to God and noticing God in everything. He studied, he'd become a priest in Paris, made friends with Francis Xavier, and made communal vows of poverty and chastity. He then went about forming the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, a religious order that was later recognised by the Pope. This was not a group like the Cistercians or Carmelites, but was contemplative, but contemplation that led to action. It would lead him to find God in all things. He is celebrated in a, a slightly different way uh, to many of the other saints because he wasn't apparently the easiest man to get along with. However, he did achieve a lot as a superior of the Jesuits in Rome. 
He did spiritual counselling. He set up the first orphanage in Rome. He set up a university called the College Romano. And he set up a house for reformed prostitutes. As I said, he's not loved, perhaps, in the same way that St. Francis of Assisi or St. Teresa of Lisieux might be, because he could be hard to live with, and he was a very practically minded man. He wanted to achieve things. Um, but he was known for his love of God and the way that he could see God in everything. And I read that Peter Paul Rubens, one of the famous artists of the time, has painted this wonderful saint, showing him looking heavenward with tears coming down from his eyes and a smile on his face in the sense of this joy that he has in finding God. It led him to write this famous book and also leading us to the spiritual exercises, which we can do to this day and many people do. Over a four week period, sometimes known as 30 day uh, journey of ex spiritual exercises, the first week is found as a way of giving gratitude to God's gifts to us. The second week are meditations on the life and ministry of Jesus. The third week looks and meditates upon the passion of Jesus, looking at his life and his death for us. And then in the fourth week, we contemplate the resurrection, the journey that Jesus took to new life. When we do these exercises, we also read in this wonderful book by James Martin that when we experience this journey that St. Ignatius takes us on, we should see it as like learning to dance. The Africans uh, particularly have this understanding of the Trinity, that we dance in tune to the Trinity, and the, the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, St. Ignatius too found that we should learn to dance to the Spirit of God, and many of the books written about his style of worship and style of spirituality speak about this dancing. So you can, for example, read this book and find it an enjoyable read, but do nothing with it. The key to living life as a Jesuit Catholic is to then turn what you have learned into experience so that you can experience what it is. It's a bit like learning to dance. You can read a book on dancing, but you really then have to do it to experience what it's like and to learn to do it well. Some of the great saints that came out of this, or some of the great men, St. Edmund Campion, who's a neighbouring saint to us at, here in Maidenhead, the Catholic Church is named after St. Edmund Campion. He was a man who he kept with his faith during persecution in difficult times in this country. Walter Sizek is another one, who an American who during, uh, spent time in Soviet labour camps and survived. This type of spirituality inspired many famous people. One that struck me was John Corridan, an American social scientist who worked for labor reform in 1940s New York. And apparently this is the inspiration behind the famous film On the Waterfront. Not a film that I've watched, but maybe I will in the not too distant future. Styles of prayer that we talk about through St. Ignatius, Lectio Divina, or the sacred reading, a bit like the dwelling in the word that we have used within our church from Partnership in Missional Church, where we listen and pray upon the word. What is it saying to us? How is it impacting upon our life? How might there be an action that comes out of our praying on the word? Also, the imagination that we need in prayer, how we imagine ourselves in stories from scripture, using the senses, the different senses to imagine ourselves in these stories. And one that we're using at our Zoom night prayer, the examine, the idea of looking back upon the day just gone, giving thanks for where we noticed God at work, giving thanks for the opportunities to see God at work in our lives, and also to reflect upon those opportunities that we had that we rejected, the times when we need to say sorry for the things that we've done that day, or the chance for forgiveness and reconciliation, but also asking for the grace the following day to try and find a way where we will notice God more at life in everyday things. So what sort of life may we learn through this? Well, the sort of questions that St. Ignatius is probably asking us is, how do I know what I'm doing with my life? What am I supposed to be doing? How do I make good decisions? How can I live a simple life? How can I be a good friend to someone? How can I face suffering? How can I find happiness? How can I find God?
How do I pray and how do I love? Finding God in all things. This week as you go forward, think about the life of Saint Ignatius and think about how these forms of prayer may help each and every one of us to find just a little way, particularly in these times of coronavirus, where we are told to try and seek God in that spiritual journey of life, whether it's taking time out to go for a beautiful walk or in other simple ways where we might notice God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven, knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect and the Readings for St. Ignatius of Loyola. Let us pray. Father, you gave St. Ignatius of Loyola to your church to bring greater glory to your name. May we follow his example on earth and share the crown of life in heaven. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. 
Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks or to the Church of God, just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else, so that they may be saved. Take me for your model, as I take Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. How happy are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke. Great crowds accompanied Jesus on his way and he turned and spoke to them. If any man comes to me without hating his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life too, he cannot be my disciple. Anyone who does not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And indeed, which of you here, intending to build a tower, would not first sit down and work out the cost to see if he had enough to complete it? Otherwise, if he laid the foundation and then found himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers would all start making fun of him and saying, here is a man who started to build and was unable to finish. Or again, what king marching to war against another king would not first of all consider whether 10,000 men he could stand up to the other who advanced against him with 20,000? If not, then while the other king was still a long way off, he would send envoys to sue for peace. So in the same way, none of you can be my disciple unless he gives up all his possessions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Let us pray. Lord, may the sacrifice of thanksgiving, which we offer at the Eucharist, on the feast of Saint Ignatius, lead us to the eternal praise of your glory. This we ask in your name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, you call us to your table and feed us with the bread of life. Draw us and all people to serve your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and for evermore. 
Amen. Recalling our baptismal promises, we go forth to channel God's love. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.